Manchester City players aren't all equally successful in the national team environment. People have started discussing Pep Guardiola's system, which seems too complex for national team coaches to replicate and operate. While that statement isn't entirely wrong, let's consider Real Madrid as an example. Real Madrid, known for their free-flowing style of play, faces similar challenges. Let's explore this further. As the reigning European champions, Real Madrid is a dream destination for almost every player and naturally those who make it into their squad are immediately called up by their respective national teams. So who are the Real Madrid players representing their countries? Do they get to start in national team matches? And what roles do they play? Let's delve into some statistical analysis. Real Madrid has contributed the most players to Euro 2024 with 13 names. First up is the Spanish national team. Los Blancos have three players in the squad. Danny Carvajal, Nacho Fernandez, and Joselu. Carvajal and Nacho played the full 90 minutes in Spain's 3-0 victory against Croatia. Notably, this was only the duo's first appearance in the Euro finals. Carvajal shown by scoring a goal to make it three endro for La Roja. As for Joselu, he remained on the bench throughout the match. Next, we have the German national team, where Real Madrid contributes two players, Toni Kroos and Antonio Rudiger. Rudiger started both matches while Kroos played 80 minutes in the first game and completed the full match in the second. Both players performed well in Germany's two victories. The only blemish was Rudiger's unfortunate own goal in the match against Scotland. Croatia contributes only one name, Luka Modric. Unfortunately for the 39-year-old midfielder, Croatia has secured only one point after two matches and faces the risk of elimination in the group stage. Their final match against Italy will be crucial. Andriy Lunin represented the Ukrainian national team in the match against Romania, but it turned out to be a disastrous performance for him. His mistakes and lack of form contributed to Ukraine's 0-3 defeat. Arda Guler, the youngest player from Real Madrid participating in Euro 2024, made an impact by scoring a goal in Turkey's 3-1 victory over Georgia. Jude Bellingham, who currently plays for Real Madrid, featured for the England national team. Despite England's lackluster performance, Bellingham's lone goal was a bright spot in their match against Serbia. Finally, the French national team boasts several Real Madrid players. Ferland Mendy. Aurelien Choameni, Eduardo Camavinga, and Kylian Mbappe. Among them, only Mbappe and Camavinga saw playing time. Mbappe played the full 90 minutes before being substituted due to a nasal injury. Camavinga came on as a substitute in the 71st minute, leaving a moderate impression. Chouameni remained on the bench due to ongoing recovery from an injury. Mendy faces tough competition for the left-back position against Theo Hernandez. Overall, the list of Real Madrid players participating in Euro 2024 has seen action in the matches, and many of them have left significant marks. Oh, it's a shame. Whenever Tony Cruz touches the ball, the TV commentators are full of praise for him. That's a rather amusing comment from a viewer, but let's face the truth. Despite the frequent accolades, no one dares to criticize Tony Cruz at this moment. Watching his precise ball movement feels like savoring a fine aged wine. Unfortunately, this precious bottle of wine is running low. Real Madrid currently boasts two of the world's most exceptional midfielders in football history, Tony Cruz and Luka Modric. However, not both of these names are shining brightly at Euro 2024. Tony Cruz, since his return to the German national team, has truly transformed Die Mannschaft. The 34-year-old midfielder's finesse in the middle of the pitch contributes to Germany's fluid ball control and dangerous attacks against opponents. In the opening match against Scotland, the stats speak for themselves. Kroos had a 100% passing accuracy in the first half and 99% overall before being substituted in the 80th minute. If anyone claims that Cruz only plays short passes to inflate his accuracy percentage, consider the post-match statistics. He successfully completed all eight of his long passes, including a precise assist to Joshua Kimmich for the opening goal. 
In the second match, although Cruz's passing rate decreased significantly, it's still remarkable when compared to his own standards. He maintained an impressive 95% passing accuracy. Fan score rated him 8.1, making him the third highest rated player in the German squad, trailing only Joshua Kimmich and Ilkay Gundogan. Seeing Cruz perform like this leaves Real Madrid fans feeling wistful, especially since he announced retirement after Euro 2024. Only a personal U-turn decision could alter his retirement plans. Truly, when you look at Cruz and Modric, they represent two completely different extremes. The 39-year-old player participating in his final Euro with the Croatian national team unfortunately finds himself in a group of death alongside Spain and Italy. Modric's performances in both matches haven't been particularly impressive. The signs of aging are the most accurate words to describe Modric at this moment. He played only 65 minutes in the match against Spain before being substituted. During his time on the field, Modric couldn't do much, appearing outmatched by the youthful and combative Spanish midfield. In the match against Albania, despite an improved performance, Modric couldn't carry the team to victory. A costly late-minute goal resulted in them losing two valuable points. This situation puts Croatia's chances of elimination in the group stage closer than ever, especially since their final match is against the Italian national team. It will be a bittersweet ending for Modric, witnessing his homeland team's early exit in his final international tournament. But fear not, Real Madrid has a shining star. A remarkably young player recently unleashed a beautifully executed shot, securing victory for the team. From someone who wasn't expected to perform, he's now the source of immense joy for Real Madrid fans. Let's find out more about this talented young man, Arda Guler, the 19-year-old football prodigy from Real Madrid, made a significant impact during Euro 2024 by scoring an incredible goal in Turkey's match against Georgia in Group F. In the 65th minute, Guler unleashed a powerful long-range shot from outside the penalty area, leaving Georgian goalkeeper Georgi Mamardashvili with no chance. The trajectory of the ball, covering a distance of 25 meters, defied imagination as it curved and found the back of the net. This goal put Turkey ahead for the second time in the match. Notably, Guler's positioning for the shot demonstrated the difference between a talented genius and an ordinary player. Moreover, Arda Guler became the youngest player to score in their Euro debut, breaking the previous record held by global superstar Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo achieved this feat at the age of 19 years and 128 days in 2004, but Guler surpassed it at just 19 years and 114 days. The joy extended beyond Turkish fans. Even Madridistas celebrated this rising star. Despite playing only 10 La Liga matches last season, the 19-year-old talent scored six goals, a performance unmatched by many other stars. His emergence fills Real Madrid, supporters with hope for an exciting new season. One more star from Real Madrid shone brightly in the opening match, Jude Bellingham. The praise for the young English star is well-deserved. His habit of stepping up to rescue the team in crucial moments has become second nature. It was Bellingham, the former Dortmund player who scored the only goal for England in their clash against Serbia. Despite having stars like Harry Kane, Phil Foden and Saka, it was Jude Bellingham who stepped up to save the national team. Against Serbia's defense, Bellingham delivered an impressive performance. He maintained a 95.7% passing accuracy, touched the ball 92 times, and made 24 passes into the opponent's third of the field. Bellingham also won nine duels, earned four free kicks, and had three successful tackles. Additionally, he had two touches inside the penalty area, attempted one shot, and scored a goal. In this season, the 2003-born midfielder contributed to 41 goals, including 25 he scored himself and 16 assists for teammates across all levels. Being honored as La Liga's outstanding player in the 2023-2024 season, Bellingham's standout performance for the national team is no surprise. For many years now, Real Madrid hasn't been the dominant force in Spain. Most Spanish players at Real have often played backup roles for the national team. 
However, times have changed, and these individuals have gradually become the team's leaders. You could say that the Spanish Real Madrid players are true veterans, with Nacho Fernandez and Danny Carvajal both over 30 years old. As the saying goes, the older the ginger, the spicier it gets. Although only Nacho and Carvajal featured in Spain's opening match, they made significant contributions to La Roja's convincing 3-0 victory. It might surprise you, but this was the duo's first appearance in a Euro Finals tournament for the national team. Right from the start, they left an impression. Nacho, while not an exceptionally outstanding center back, brought invaluable experience from over 10 years of playing. Throughout the 90 minutes, he maintained a 95% passing accuracy, won all three aerial duels, succeeded in two out of three ground duels, and completed three out of four successful passes. After this summer, Nacho will bid farewell to Real to move to another continental league, avoiding any situations where he'd have to face Los Blancos. It's likely that this Euro will be Nacho's last. Whether he heads to the Saudi Pro League or MLS, his departure will further reinforce this decision. At Real, Nacho has faced ridicule as a fringe player. Despite doubts about his form when called up to the national team, Nacho proved to be one of Spain's most impressive players after the opening group stage match. As for Carvajal, he proved effective in defense with two clearances, one interception and one blocked shot. But Carvajal's contributions on the attacking front were also noteworthy. He was the player who extended Spain's lead to 3 0. Interestingly, Carvajal is rarely mentioned in debates about the world's best right backs. People often discuss Trent Alexander Arnold, Kyle Walker, or Cancelo instead. However, when it comes to titles and consistent performance over the years, Carvajal stands out. Real Madrid always has a reliable presence on the right flank with him. Despite Nacho and Carvajal not being heavily utilized for the national team in recent years, both have proven highly effective whenever given the opportunity. Their experience and high-level play make them valuable assets, both technically and in terms of team spirit for the young national players. The harmonious blend of these two generations could be the key to La Roja achieving their goals at Euro 2024. Curiously, the French national team boasts the highest number of Real Madrid players. It's quite unusual. Some get very little playing time, while others with talent find themselves on the bench. And then, there's that one star who managed to break their nose. Some even joke that the broken nose was a distraction from an incredible missed chance. Finally, among the Real Madrid fraternity in Ukraine, Lunin deserves a special mention. His performance places him at the bottom of the rankings. But let's delve into the specifics. How did they actually perform? Let's find out. If the Real Madrid players in other national teams shine brightly, the Real Madrid French contingent seems a bit lackluster. One by one, Mendy, Chouameni, and Kamavinga find themselves on the bench. The sole exception is Real Madrid's newcomer, Kylian Mbappe, who starts from the beginning. Throughout the match against Austria, the Frenchman struggled. Even a reputable forward like Mbappe lost some of his usual flair. Although Mbappe scored the only goal that secured Le Bleu's victory, it came from an own goal by an opponent's defender. Not long before Euro in Germany, Mbappe made a controversial statement that Euro is tougher than the World Cup. While that statement holds true for Mbappe himself, the statistics reveal a different story. The 1998-born striker scored 12 goals across two consecutive World Cups, but at the Euro, that number stands at around zero. Isn't that clear evidence? Mbappe could have improved his performance on the European stage if he hadn't inexplicably missed a chance when facing Austria's goalkeeper. Furthermore, Real Madrid's new signing suffered a severe nose injury, causing him to miss the next match against the Netherlands. If he continues this disappointing form, it's unlikely we'll see Mbappe's first Euro goal anytime soon. Next up is Kamavinga, who entered the field from the bench but didn't leave a significant impact on changing the game for the French team. As for Chouamini, his recent return from injury has made Coach Deschamps cautious in using him. 
Another real player who disappointed in the opening group stage match is Ukraine's goalkeeper, Lunin. Throughout the past season, Lunin was a crucial part of Los Blancos. His standout performances in Champions League matches significantly contributed to Real's 15th title. However, in the clash against Romania, Lunin repeatedly made mistakes, contributing to the heavy defeat for his team. In the 29th minute with Ukraine controlling the game, Lunin made an errant pass to the left flank, intercepted by Dennis Mann. Mann quickly passed across to team captain Nikolai Stanchiu, who unleashed a powerful shot from about 21 meters, leaving Lunin no chance to rectify the situation. After all, it's clear that not every real player shines when representing their national teams. As you can see, Manchester City didn't perform exceptionally well either, and Real Madrid wasn't significantly better. The standout performers aren't always the most high-profile names. So, today's football news seems to be a fair reminder to Pep Guardiola and Man City that national team performance sometimes depends on various other factors. What are your thoughts on this? Let's discuss in the comments below.